Hello and another warm welcome to you all. My name is Richard Wakefield and I bring to you today a most random speed edit slash tutorial. Now, us Brits cannot cope with sudden intense heat. Fact. Yesterday it was a scorcher and whilst I enjoyed an ice cream, I thought of a most random image I could make. So in today's video, I'll be melting like an ice cream. Right, so there's a small mood board here of a few images I found, mainly reminding me how things, well, melt. I'll keep those to the side of my composite as reference images. I took a quick self-portrait of myself sitting at one end of a table, super easy on the lighting, just one here for some nice side light and one higher up to help brighten my face. And because I didn't want to have to keep getting up from the table to look at the back of the camera, I instead used the Camera Connect app on my iPhone to do a bit of live remote view shooting. I set it to two seconds on the timer so I could quickly move the phone out of the way every time I pressed the shutter button. So from this small selection of images, I ended up with two, one with my head rested on my hand and one where my hand was holding a pretend ice cream. I quickly blended the images and we're off. Here's a 3D model of an ice cream set to an angle I knew would work well on the table. Some adjustments in transform mode and a bit of masking and it was starting to look quite good already. But to really work well with the source image, I matched the blur level and even added some noise. Then it was down to some adjustment layers, such as color balance and soft light, to match both the overall color and lighting highlights and shadows. Check out this before and after to see how effective it is. To add some puddles to the table, I quite surprisingly found this 3D model of a puddle of blood, which I could see working really well. I used two angles of it and then moved and transformed them into place, masking away those excess droplets. To get them roughly right, I painted over them with a color blending mode and played around with the levels too. Now for the magic. I cut round my elbow and placed it at the top of my layers. I opened up Liquify and then changed the opacity of the backdrop so that I could see it. With the Liquify push tool set to almost 100% on the pressure level, I was able to really move the skin around in a way that looked like it was melting into the puddle. Be really careful with Liquify, take your time, do it in small stages. From there I softened the blend using a mask and then got to work on the highlights and shadows, painting in on the soft light layers. Time to do the exact same thing to my face. I made some huge long drips as well as some smaller ones but only really working on the bottom half of my face only. Once I had it roughly how I wanted I hid the background so I could see more clearly what I was doing. I copy and pasted an extra drip just with a freehand lasso tool. As you might have seen, the more that you liquefy, the more the pixels get stretched and the detail just gets worse. Therefore, I made a decision to copy and paste small sections from the source image to bring back things like stubble and skin pores. And I think you'll agree it makes quite a big difference. I then used a multiply blend mode layer to slightly darken my hand, adding some shadow too. I'm now looking at the image as a whole, making extra corrections with colours, highlights and shadows, especially with those puddles. On those face strips I wanted some three dimension and so I used soft light and normal blend mode layers to paint in with light and dark colours, always using those reference images on the right to see how light reacts to drips. As before I'm adding in more texture and detail by cutting and transforming the parts of my chin and the cheeks. Now I'm just really refining the lighting and the shadows, really working towards realism. For the final steps in really making my image stand out, I firstly recolored the table to a more saturated yellow. I then cut myself and the table away so that I could play around with a solid color background, which turned out to be blue. I then made some changes to the tonal contrast, colour processing and details in Nick Colour Effects, followed by some overall colour tweaks in Camera Raw. And that's it, we've reached the end. 
As ever, don't forget to like, subscribe and be notified and find me on Instagram if you want to share your creations too. So thanks so much. See you all next time. Bye.